Do you like to be disturbed when you're dancing around in your little garden? Well, I work all the time. So never, never interrupt me, okay? Not if there's a fire. Not if there's a sound of a thud coming from my room and one week later, there's a stench coming from my apartment that can only be a decaying human body. And you have to hold a hanky to your nose because the stench is so thick that you think you're going to faint. And if it's election night and you're excited because one of the fudge packers that you invited becomes one of the first queer presidents of the United States and you want someone to share the moment with, even then, don't come knocking. Not for any reason. Do you get me, sweetheart? So another film I'm going to review for you bastards today is As Good As It Gets. Now, this came out in 1997. Um, it won Best Actor for, uh, well, Jack Nicholson won an Oscar for his role in this, as well as Helen Hunt. And Greg Kinnear uh, got a nomination for Best Supporting Actor, playing the fag. Um, but, um, yeah, so he's... um. Concessive compulsive disorder. He um he's basically an asshole to everyone he meets, but then his gay neighbor, uh, Greg Kinnear, well, Greg Kinnear's character, uh, uh shit, his name, um, he uh gets beaten up by this thugs basically, and um. Melvin Udall, uh, Jack Nicholson's character, has to babysit his dog while uh, he's in the hospital. Um, and uh, Helen Hunt, she's a waitress for uh, Melvin, and she already knows how the whole uh, restaurant knows how much of a prick he is to everyone, and she's the only one that can tolerate him to a degree until he mentions her son's uh, sickness. Um, but he's also the only one that really stands up to him and puts him in his place and then he feels like an idiot so therefore he watches his mouth more around her some, to a degree but then he can't help it, that's just who he is. He just, he said, he felt something and says it. Um, no matter if it hurts your feelings or not. Um, but anyway, uh, Melvin Udall, uh, hates, uh, his neighbor's dog with a passion, but as he's babysitting him, he grows a fondness for him, and the dog starts to like Melvin, or ever Simon. Yeah, the neighbor. Um, but then uh, he comes out of the hospital and the dog, uh, what's the dog's name? I forget, it'll come, it'll come to me. But the dog is, seems more drawn to Melvin Utah because he has gives him treats and stuff from, or uh, bacon from the restaurant he eats at. Um, Anyway, Carol, yeah, Carol, uh, Helen Hunt's character, she, um, has, didn't have the money to, um, have, uh, um, her son put, uh, through treatments with his sickness, um, so Melvin pays for it, but not because he likes her, it's because he wants her to, uh, wait on him at the restaurant because she, she moved to be closer to her son and not live in, Man uh, not work in Manhattan. Um, but, uh, it also stars, uh, Cooper Gunn Jr., which is really good, which is not in the part very much. But, um, everyone is great in this movie. Like, there's not a bad thing I can say about it. Um, it's so funny, but it's heartwarming and, uh, Carol and Simon together, they bring the best out in Melvin, 
even though he is, you know, hard to deal with. Um, but then, um, he, you know, he invites them to, um, his, uh, vacation thing. I forget what that is exactly. Um, but Simon and Carol start to kind of have a thing for each other, even though he's gay. He just really likes her as a person, um, because he can connect with her, and Melvin gets jealous of that, and, um, at the end, you know, Carol and Melvin finally, uh, have warm roles together, um, which I guess is, um, means they get together, or maybe just become good friends, I don't know, it could be either one, um, leads it up to the viewer to use that as in their imagination, but, I mean, they kiss at the end, so I'm assuming they're together, <laughs> um, but yeah, this is another one of my favorite movies. I've seen it so many times. I don't know, my mom, my mom liked it. My dad liked it. Um, that's one thing that got me into the movies like these. Like, I was always into horror. But then, you know, in acting and with Silence of the Lambs, you know, that was like the first horror movie that really got me intrigued in the film so much. And then I went on to, like, in drama and joining drama class and, I was one of the best actors in there, which isn't, I'm not tooting on horn, but the other actors didn't really try to do much. They just did it because it was easy to them, I guess, to get an A. Um, but, <clears throat> yeah, so, and also it won Best Picture, I believe, um, I'm not sure about that one, but, um, so, that's pretty much my view. I hope you enjoyed it, and visit it again. I'm sure you've seen it, um, and if you haven't, buy it. You'll like it. Open his curtains for him, so he can see God's beautiful work, and he'll know that even things like this happen for the best. Or do they teach you to talk like this in some Panama City sailor want a hump hump bar? Sell crazy someplace else. We're all stocked up here. TriStar Pictures invites you to meet a truly appalling individual. He's a freak show. He's the worst person I ever met. Help! If you want to see me, you want to make an appointment. Dr. Green, how can you diagnose someone as an obsessive compulsive disorder and then act as though I had some choice about barging him? <laughs> your last floor. Have you, have you, uh, have you seen my dog with a little, little face? Little... Uh-oh. You have no idea what your work means to me. How do you write women so well? I think of a man. And I take away reason and accountability. Melvin, wait! <laughs> Shut up, kids! <laughs> Definitely a package you don't want to open or touch. Pay me a compliment, Melvin. I need one. Quick. That's maybe the best compliment of my life. From Academy Award winner James L. Brooks. Well, maybe I overshot a little because I was aiming it just enough to keep you from walking out. <laughs> <laughs> Comes a story about how the people you can't live with. Uh, Carol the waitress, Simon the fag. Become the people you can't live without. We all have these terrible stories to get over, and you... It's not true. Some of us have great stories, pretty stories, that take place at lakes with boats and friends and noodle salad. Just no one in this car. Jack Nicholson, Helen Hunt, Greg Kinnear, and Cuba Gooding Jr. I love you. I tell you, buddy. I'd be the luckiest guy alive if that did it for me.